Las Vegas. Welcome to Fertility Thursdays with NFI. I am Dr. Cindy Duke, Medical Director and Physician here at the Nevada Fertility Institute. Today we're talking all about Clomid. Uh, for many of you watching, Clomid is very familiar and that's intentional because it's actually the most commonly used fertility drug in the world. So Clomid is a tablet and it's actually, that's the trade name or the brand name. Its generic name is Clomiphene Citrate. Again, that's Clomiphene Citrate. So why are we talking about Clomid? Well, other than the obvious reason, again, which is that it's the most common uh, fertility medication used out there, we are also talking about it because it is the medication that most patients who, when they're either diagnosed with infertility or if they're seeing their family medicine doctor or their primary OBGYN, they're prescribed Clomid. Now, Clomid is a relatively safe drug, actually pretty safe. Like I said, it is very commonly used, and that's in part because it is, uh, of all the fertility medications, it is FDA, right? FDA approved, uh, by the, that is approved by the Food and Drug Administration here in the United States for use as a fertility drug. So how does it work? Well, it works in certain groups of women, and believe it or not, we also use Clomid in some men who have specific types of infertility. So the way it's used is it's typically taken for a few days during a cycle, uh, typically five days, and it's taken during the early part of the menstrual cycle, meaning if you consider the first day of a menstrual cycle to be the first day a woman starts having bright red bleeding, then somewhere between days three and seven or days five and nine of her cycle, she will take Clomid for about five days. Now, Clomid comes in multiple doses and the exact dosing for every patient is determined by her doctor and it's based on a variety of factors. So I will always counsel all patients that before you start Clomid, you should be thoroughly evaluated by your doctor and assessed for whether that is the appropriate medication for you. Now, there are a few considerations that must be made whenever we talk about Clomid. So the first is, are you the right patient for Clomid? And certainly, uh, looking just at how Clomid works, uh, the way it works actually is it tricks your brain into sending a bigger message to your ovaries. And so it's really important then that that message pathway between the brain and the ovaries be working. Meaning if you're someone whose pituitary gland, so that's the part of the brain that we're most concerned with, whose pituitary gland or hypothalamus, that's the second part of the brain that is involved in this messaging to your ovary, if either of those parts isn't functional, whether it be that it's been shut down because you've lost a lot of weight and you're maybe uh, someone with like an eating disorder or an athlete, an extreme athlete who in turn your body then sort of shuts down menstrual regular functioning, Clomid won't really work for you. So this is why I say it's very important that a patient is assessed and evaluated by their doctor. And I say this because again, like I said, Clomid is very common. It comes up in conversation, you know, whether you're talking to your friends, sometimes talking to parents, coworkers, or simply just out and about or on the internet, Clomid comes up a lot. And so while it can be and is used as a first line treatment for many, many forms, of infertility, it has to be used judiciously, meaning it's after careful selection and assessment of the patient who's using it. So again, like I said, it works in certain patients, not everybody. Another group of patients for whom Clomid works for some, but not others, are patients su suffering with polycystic ovary syndrome. And that actually led to a number of researchers and a number of studies that were even sponsored by a National Institute of Health that showed that in many women with polycystic ovary syndrome, a 
different fertility medication, a different tablet, might actually be more effective in achieving pregnancy. So again, that's important to know. And so that's why you need a trained physician, an OBGYN, or in my case, if your OBGYN sent you to see someone like me, a reproductive endocrinology and infertility specialist, uh, that's one of the things we assess for, given that people with polycystic ovary syndrome may actually benefit from not using clomiphene, clomid, and going to something else uh, known as letrozole or Fumara. Okay, uh, otherwise, big things to know about clomiphene, it works in the people for whom it will work. Uh, the chance of success really depends on a few other patient parameters. So, you know, it depends on your age, it depends on uh, whether your fallopian tubes are open. Obviously, if your fallopian tubes are not open, uh, fertility medications won't really work for you. And that meaning work for you while you try to have intercourse at home. Because again, like we talked about previously, in order to get pregnant, even though the baby grows here in the womb, pregnancy starts out here in the fallopian tubes. That's where sperm and egg meet. It's where they get together. And so certainly if you have tubal factor infertility, meaning your fallopian tubes are blocked, clomiphene, which is a tablet that you take that induces, it tricks your brain into giving a message to your ovary to tell it to release an egg. If the tubes are not open, then even though the egg is released, sperm won't be able to get to the egg in the fallopian tube. So that's very important to know. So again, it is the reason why I say you actually need to have an evaluation by an OBGYN who understands and feels comfortable treating someone who's struggling to conceive or going to see someone like me, a reproductive endocrinology and infertility specialist. Okay, so that's the general uh, gist of how it works. Uh, typically, my recommendation, let's say you're being treated with clomiphene by your physician, i.e. your gynecologist, so you haven't seen a subspecialist yet, the recommendation is that you try for three cycles, okay? So if you've tried three different times with clomiphene, you've been able to confirm that an egg was released, perhaps by doing a home ovulation kit, then if it didn't work, that would be a good time to move on to seeing a subspecialist like myself. And of course, in women older than 35, that's especially important because time is of the essence. And if you're over 40, I actually will recommend instead of trying to use clomiphene to get pregnant, you should go bypass that step and go straight to seeing the reproductive endocrinology and infertility specialist like myself. And that goes back to what we've talked about with egg number, meaning you're working with a very finite pool of eggs if you're 40 or older. And you know, it, you need to be on the clock and moving if your goal is to have a live, healthy, take-home baby. Okay, you know, there are other things we can talk about. Like I said, clomid is also used in men, certainly in men for whom there is a correlation between low testosterone and thus low sperm count. Uh, clomiphene is used in that context. Um, it has to be used by people who are specialized and understand how to treat and how to dose the clomid because the dosing is very different from what is used in women but it can be very effective, very effective. And so uh, physicians like myself often will employ Clomid as they treat someone with uh, male factor infertility who suffers from low testosterone. Okay, let's start going through some questions and see where we are. So we have a few questions here. So let's see. First question, why does every OBGYN seem to always prescribe uh, Clomid. Well, like I said, uh, part of it is a comfort level. So OBGYNs in general tend to be comfortable prescribing clomiphene for two reasons. One is, like I said, it's most commonly prescribed, most commonly used. And for most OBGYNs, they would have had experience using it even when they were training to become OBGYNs. The second reason is because in terms of paperwork, it is the one FDA approved uh, fertility medication on the market. 
while we use everything else to treat infertility, and there's tons of data, lots and lots of evidence for using them in terms of what is actually approved by the FDA for treating infertility, it's Clomid. So they feel comfortable in that regard as well because it's an on-label use. Let's see if we have any other questions. Okay, and then we have a couple questions here from email. So one question said, how do I know what dose I should be using for Clomid? Well, dosing for clomiphene really depends. It depends on a number of factors, including whether or not you've been on clomiphene before. It also depends on um, how your body responds to it. So the usual starting dose for clomiphene is 50 milligrams, 50 milligrams, but it can be as high as 250 milligrams, 250. What I can and will say is for most patients, at least the ones who are being prescribed Clomid by their general OBGYN doctor or their family medicine doctor, if they get to 150 milligrams, meaning in any given month, you require 150 milligrams of Clomid and you're still not pregnant from it, your doctors will use that as an impetus for referring you to see a subspecialist like myself. And I think that's a great idea, I really do. Um, in terms of the dosing to start, most people start at 50, that is recommended. And why is that? You know, Some patients will say, well, if the maximum dose is 250, why not just start me on that? The truth is, it has to do with what the biggest risk of using Clomid is. And the biggest risk is that it can work and that it might work so well in this woman who's taking it that she may release multiple eggs. All those eggs may fertilize and all implant, and then she can end up with a pregnancy with multiple babies. And that of course comes with all sorts of risk, right? So being pregnant with multiple babies, meaning two or more babies growing in the uterus at the same time, poses health risks to the babies and to the mom. Some of those risks include, well, babies can be born premature. The more you have in there, the quicker they run out of space. And so the sooner you may uh, go into labor. Uh, premature babies have risks such as uh, related to prematurity, which can range from lung disease, blindness, other neurological deficits, learning problems, just general health issues. But for a mother, she also is at numerous high risks, which include gestational diabetes, uh, high blood pressure related issues, which can actually threaten her life while she's pregnant. And so this is why you need to be on, if you're on, if you're going to be on Clomid or any other fertility medication, it needs to be managed by someone who understands all these, knows how to dose you and how to monitor you. So what is monitoring? So typically if a woman is on Clomid, her doctor will encourage her to have an ultrasound periodically as she's on the medication to assure that the dose that she's on is the appropriate dose. There's really no other way to be sure of what the dose is uh, in terms of appropriateness without monitoring. So monitoring typically means doing an ultrasound right at the start of your period before you start the medication and then you do it in the middle of, right after you finish the medication to see whether your ovary is starting to respond uh, to the intentional goal of how it works, the medication. And then typically your doctor follows you until your ovary has a follicle. Simply put, a follicle is an egg house. So eggs are microscopic. We cannot see them on ultrasound, but we can see the place where the egg grows. And so that's called a follicle. And we actually know that there are certain sizes of follicles that will house a mature egg. That is to say an egg which can be fertilized by sperm. So believe it or not, eggs actually have to go through a process where they become mature. So that's important to know. Um, and so that's what monitoring is. Uh, sometimes monitoring also includes blood work 
to see whether or not that house that's developing, like I said, actually has an egg. Sometimes someone can have an empty follicle, meaning the follicle doesn't have an egg in it. So that's where additional monitoring can help in terms of blood work and measuring estrogen levels because we know what level should be appropriate in terms of estrogen level to coincide with an egg being in a follicle and being mature. So those are the big things to know and to understand when you're on Clomid. Uh, again, like I said, for some women, Clomid will not work. And there are some women who we know a priori, meaning ahead of time, that it will not work. So that woman would not be a good candidate for Clomid. There are some other women for whom Clomid may work, but they need an extra help in addition to Clomid. And so that will be women for whom they have a history of not ovulating on their own, meaning if you are someone who doesn't have a period on her own, usually the doctor has to give you some medications to induce or start a period, then uh, clomiphene might not be all or enough for you to have a ovulation. So typically you might be doing clomid plus an injection of a special hormone known as HCG to really trigger that final step to release an egg, of course. So those are key things to know. I uh, really appreciate you joining us today. Uh, let's see what other questions we have. So the other questions we have here, would a male taking Clomid adversely affect the female? No. So the nice thing about Clomid is that you take it by mouth. So if a man is taking Clomid, actually Clomid works the same way in terms of the signaling, the messaging in a man as it does in a woman. Meaning a guy takes Clomid and just like in a woman, it tricks the brain into sending a bigger message, but in this case, a bigger message to his testicles. And of course the testes are where you make testosterone and where you make sperm. So what happens is it actually increases his testosterone production and as well increases his sperm production if, it's, if his cells that make sperm are functional. And so that's the key to how Clomid works in a guy. Again, dosing is different and the duration of time that he stays on Clomid is different. But it in no way affects the woman. It doesn't, the hormone or the medication doesn't secrete into her or anything. It's very safe for the female partner. Other questions. When I was prescribed Clomid, two rounds, I was very, hold on, I'm not seeing the rest of this comment. Uh, okay, I can't see the rest of that comment, but I'm going to assume it probably is related to mood changes or symptoms from Clomid. So uh, Clomid has a very limited side effect profile, but it does have a side effect profile in some women. Meaning some women, while they're taking Clomid, they may have headaches. That's a very common complaint. Some women may actually have difficulty staying asleep. So their sleep cycle is shortened. Uh, and so certainly for me, as your physician, that's a question I ask all my patients when they're on these medications. Are you sleeping well? Are you, uh, you know, sleeping well? So the question is, I was very on edge and angry much of the time. Yes. So mood changes. Well, I will tell you, a big part of those mood changes, usually when you delve into them, they're related to the patient not sleeping well because Clomid can cause insomnia. And as we probably most can imagine, if you haven't slept well, then the day following or the days following, you're edgy, right? You're, because you're, you're, you know, you're a little bit grouchy, so to speak. And so in patients like that, I would then prescribe them something to help them sleep. We start with natural remedies first, but sometimes we may go up to other things that might be able to help them sleep. Um, I will tell you that most patients who are having those mood symptoms, edginess, anger, etc., we correct their sleep habits, they're doing better. They're doing better. Okay, let's see, what else do we have in terms of questions here? Um, just making sure we've actually covered all of our questions, and it looks like we have. Um, let's see here. Can you prescribe Clomid without seeing the patient? <laughs> um, I do not recommend it. I honestly don't. And I know most patients will say, I know my body. Some patients will even say, you know what? I did Clomid before, and I got pregnant with my child. So 
why can't I just do it again? I don't need to see the doctor. Just call me in a prescription and I do the same thing. Well, the truth is, as I've been alluding to all year so far, a lot can change between pregnancies. Certainly, as a woman, you're a little bit older oftentimes, right? I mean, nobody has a baby typically at the same age, two babies. So that can change. Maybe something changed during the course of your pregnancy. You've had surgery, perhaps, if you've had a C-section for a delivery. A number of things can change. And again, also, if you're now older, i.e. age 40 or older, I really think the first thing is to see your specialist. If you've been trying on your own for six months and you're not pregnant, you should definitely be seeing your specialist. If you're over 40, even seeing them at three months so they can start the assessment and the evaluation. Okay, so that's pretty much everything that we've talked about today. So to recap, Clomid is a medication used to treat fertility, infertility, sorry. It is actually technically the only FDA approved medication for treating infertility. It's used very often worldwide and it's used not just by infertility specialists, but it's oftentimes first prescribed by an OBGYN or a family medicine doctor. The starting dose is 50 milligrams, five zero milligrams. But to be honest, the dosing depends on a number of factors. Most importantly is not every patient who is prescribed Clomid will find that it actually works for them. And how does it work? The whole goal of using Clomid is to send a message, basically a tricked message to the brain so that it in turn thinks your estrogen levels are low in terms of a woman and it starts sending a bigger message to your ovaries to say, hey, can you give us an egg, right? And so that's how it works, but not everybody is a candidate for uh, Clomid. That is determined by your doctor with a number of factors, including uh, whether or not you are capable of sending that message from the brain to the ovary. If your brain is unable to send that message due to certain medical conditions, using Clomid is really just a waste of time and uh, resources for you. There are other medications that work better and will work for you. Uh, Clomid has to be dosed by a doctor. Oftentimes the best way to determine the best dose for you is to do monitoring, meaning your doctor will do ultrasounds at p different uh, intervals while you're taking the medication during your menstrual cycle to ensure that you've actually been sending the right signal from the brain to the ovary and responding. If your ovary did not respond to any given dose of Clomid, your doctor will typically increase the dose to the next step or perhaps consider an entirely different medication. And lastly, if you're doing Clomid, I would recommend that your Clomid treatment should be a total of three cycles, meaning three menstrual cycles worth of trying the medication. If it did not work, then you should be considering moving on to see a subspecialist. Clomid can be used in conjunction with insemination or some people take it on then timed intercourse at home. And then lastly, in a small subset of patients who take Clomid, they need one extra medication, an injection, to actually trigger release of the egg. And that is the part that we call inducing ovulation. Okay? So, guys, thank you so much for joining us. We welcome your thoughts, ideas, and comments, including ideas for future Facebook Lives. Uh, we'll be back in two weeks on the 29th of June. Uh, topic to be determined. So this is a chance, guys, for you to tell us what you'd like to hear about. And then we'll pick maybe the top five to do over the next five uh, episodes. Okay, take care. I'm just going to make sure we aren't missing any questions. And so far, it looks like we've answered all of our questions. Thank you very much. Take care, guys. Goodbye.